So I just turned 30 a month ago, and uh, to 30 is a time to think about where you have been and where you want to go. And for some reason, it was a couple of weeks where I really couldn't find where I was right there and then. So it took a couple of weeks to settle into that. And, uh, and I'm still in that mode. So I'm still recopulating the things where I have been and where I want to go. And I think that's where a lot of us are. But um, I am a yoga instructor, and that's where the body worker uh, part is, and I do different type of therapies. My passion is yoga, and the deepest one of my passions is to teach yoga to men living, to people living with HIV AIDS. And I also teach yoga at the local community corrections here in Colorado Springs for a six week group at the time of men who are dealing with recovery of addiction. And I do this uh, for free from the bottom of my heart. And um, I was born in Mexico in 1983. And I was born to Emilia Villarreal and Juan Flores the sixth. So I'm the seventh. And, uh, and they were wonderful parents, very poor, very, very poor. And uh, we lived in a cardboard house of about 10 feet to 14 feet for a very long time. Uh, my father was mentally ill his whole life, and uh, my mother, my father was fully educated. He uh, had earned a, a master's degree in engineering, and my mother had only gone to school for about two and a half years of her, of her lifetime. And so my dad had dealt with mental illness since he was little, but he was incredible, and he is incredibly smart. He knows a lot about history and science and biology and Anything you want to talk about, he'll have conversation for. And he's an awesome, awesome guy, homeless, awesome guy. And uh, my mom worked really hard. My mom pulled our stove out of our uh, 10 by 14 uh, cardboard house that was built out of uh, boxes that packed refrigerators and air conditioners before. So they were real thick boxes. And it had a good roof. The, ha the house had a really, really good roof. So my mom pulled this stuff out of the house, and right at the corner of the house, she set up these strip-ply woods that formed the L shape. And she pulled our table out, the table from the house, and she sold hot dogs outside of our house. She sold really delicious bacon and guacamole hot dogs, and people will come, and she was really famous. Everywhere we were, we're like, oh, I want to come to you, hang out at your house, and hang out with your mom. I'm like, no. <laughs> you have to pay for the hot dogs. Yeah. So. Mama worked. <laughs> Mama worked at a seafood restaurant, at a factory where they made electronics, a full-time shift, a seafood restaurant on the weekends, on the daytime, and she sold hot dogs every night from our house. And she would buy bricks at the time. She would have to buy about 100 or 200 bricks at the time and save them and wait until she had a little bit of money to hire these men to come and put the bricks, make a, make a line of bricks. And slowly, she built a room. And, uh, and eventually, she built a bathroom and another room next to it. So she was an awesome, awesome hard worker mom. Um, not always in a good mood because, of course, she worked a lot, but she loved us a lot. and she try to remind us that remind us that as much as she could. And uh, being the head household and being a single mom was really hard for her. So she was really um, close at many things, at many um, expressing herself and being in a good mood. I work one job and I'm not in a good mood, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> um, so at the age of uh, 13, my, we hadn't seen my dad in three years, and I had a brother about three years old that he had not met yet. He didn't mean to. Once he met him, he was really happy that he met him, but he had just forgot that he had a, another baby. And, uh, and so my Aunt Letty uh, lived in Colorado Springs, and she invited my mom to come down to Colorado for a year and work so that my mom can go back to, color, to Mexico and uh, build a small restaurant so she wouldn't have to sell hot dogs and being exposed to just outside, just on the yard, so she can build a little room to sell hot dogs. My mom came here and noticed how wonderful life was here. 
And so my Aunt Letty went back to Colorado. I mean, to the hometown where I'm from is called San Luis Rio, Colorado, where she goes right through the Colorado River. And so by this time, I had already once set the house on fire, the cardboard house on fire, and a great neighbor walked in on time and just threw this picture of hor horchata on the, <laughs> on the wall and, and put the fire out. So it was great. I really, really enjoyed every part of it, I promise. <laughs> and so um, we came to Colorado. My, my aunt lady brought us to Colorado, and, you know, and so we were not... Um, Education is not free in Mexico. In order to go to from first grade to 12, it's not free like it is here. They don't give you the books for free. There is no free lunch, no free buses. So you have to walk sometimes 40 blocks or so to make it to the nearest school. And you have to pack your lunch, and you have to buy your books, and you pay a monthly fee that you have to pay to the school in order to attend there. And um, it had come to the time that we could not afford to go into school. And my grandma, we had to stay behind with my grandmother, and my mom came to Colorado. And uh, we stayed there for four months, so my Aunt Letty comes down and picks us up over the holidays and brings us back up here to, to meet with my mom after six months of staying with my Nana in Mexico. And so we get here, and my mom was working two jobs at the time. She worked at a dry cleaner full time, and then she also worked as a seamstress at uh, nighttime. Uh, wonderful seamstress. And, um, and quickly I was able to get a job and my mom was able to quit her part-time job and I can help her pay some of the financial bills at the house. I went to high school, I went to Palmer High School and graduated um, from Mitchell actually because we had moved close to Mitchell at that time but the majority of my time here in high school I went to Palmer. And uh, go Terriers. <laughs> <laughs> Any Palmer graduates here? No? Yay! No. <laughs> And so, um, so I grew up and uh, there was, my family always loved me. My mom had 11, uh, had 10 siblings. She's one of 11. And they were not very educated, but they were faithful to God and faithful to good values and moral values and loving each other and hanging out with each other all the time, just like elephants, being on top of each other, going from place to place to eat. And, and so it was a Beautiful family. It, it is a great family. And, um, but I had always, I, in my heart, I always had dealt with something ever since I was five years old. I was gay, or I'm gay. And uh, my family coming from many macho traditions and, uh, and just a very religious family in a very good way, in a very, very non, everything was, was wonderful about what we received from, from our faith and our religion. Um, but I knew that when I talked to my family about me being gay, they will flip over just like those fainting goats, you know? Because <laughs> that, that's, that's what they did. That's what they did at all times. <laughs> and I knew they would do that when I, whenever I came out. And so... Um, When I was 19, I worked at Babies R Us, and, uh, and I was a manager on duty, and my friend Esteban, who is now dead, he's, uh, he's part of the 27-year-old club, who I forgot to mention, but I'll mention it here in a little bit. Um, so he comes out, and he's the same age as me, and he looks like he has just seen a death, well, all ghosts are dead, but a dead ghost, just a really, really scary ghost. And, um, and so he tells me that he, that day he came out to his family, and his mom didn't take it very well. She called the priest over to their house and they were praying and running around, speaking in tongues and all this crazy stuff and trying to make him straight. And it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't Ted Haggard, so. Um. So I was the manager on duty, and, um, and I sent Stevan home. We were really good friends, and I sent him home. And uh, ever since I was five years old, I knew I was gay. I was the only kid in the block that would watch the news at 5 and 10, because I was in love with the anchor newsman. <laughs> El joven Murrieta <laughs> was his name. And uh, I never missed it, I promise. <laughs> it was always I knew everything that was going on. In, the desert war and everything, and I was five, you know. So, um, 
And so seeing Esteban going through through this process and just uh, seeing how strong he was staying to what his heart to what he felt in his heart and what he wanted for his life gave me the courage to do the same. And so the day after, I called my mom and my aunt um, so uh, that I can come out to them. And I did. And I didn't want my aunt in the room. I just needed her to catch my mom when she painted like a goat. <laughs> they both painted. <laughs> Big surprise. <laughs> um, and so I move on with my life, and I meet this guy, and we get together, and I had had a hole in my heart for a long time for the absence of my dad, and at that time I was really upset about it. I couldn't understand that he loved me, but he didn't love me like the regular parent does, you know? Like, he wasn't one of the many parents who stayed home and helped with kids and got a savings for them to go to college or dance classes or anything, you know? <laughs> um, and uh, I got a job, and I was doing really good. I was making lots of money and driving a good car, and, um, and this relationship wasn't working. And the, the worse the relationship got, the better I got at my job, and more money, and more money, and more money. And after five years of a very tormenting relationship, I got out. I, uh, I thought I can go to Denver and uh, start my life brand new, and, uh, and work hard, and focus on finding new friends, and just get a fresh new start. I felt like I had been hurt a lot in the last five years at that time by not the community, but just what I was surrounded by. And I moved to Denver. And the first day that I moved to Denver, I ran into a friend from high school. And his life had changed a lot in the last five years, and I hadn't seen him in a long time. And he, um, he came back to my house that night and, uh, and he was a really good friend. I consider him my best friend. And, and I don't hold this against him whatsoever. I know that it was part of my life experience and what I had to go through. But I was a very, I, I felt very lonely and I felt very sad that night and I felt scared. And, uh, and I ended up trying drugs with him. And I stayed in Denver for, for a long time, for about a year or so. And everything just took a down spiral from there. I was being promiscuous, partying all the time, and drinking, and just doing all the things that I should not do, and that most kids do when they're 19 or so. But when I was 19, I was too busy with church and um, going to school and working to help my mom and stuff. And so I always knew my family never stopped loving me. Never, never, never. You can tell when somebody is not doing right. And every time I saw my family, they would reach out to me and tell me how much they love me. And my, every time I talk to my grandma, they can tell on my voice that something wasn't right. And I always remember that love from my mom, from my aunts, from my grandma, from all my cousins. And I stayed out there for a long time, and some things started to change. I, uh, my job noticed what was going on, and I just didn't feel good. Nothing, nothing felt good. Not, I didn't feel like I wanted to wake up another day, and I was dealing with a lot of different stuff. And um, found more friends that were into the same circle and just kept going down and down, down the spiral. And after a, a quite a time of doing that, my job required me to travel. And I was in Kansas City, and someone invited me to a yoga class. And I went to a yoga class, and I felt something that I had never felt before. Or maybe I had forgot what it felt like, but it was a renewal of love. It was a renewal, it was a remembrance of all that love that my grandma and my aunts had deposited into me all those years of growing up next to them. And the prayers of my mom, the prayers of my family, everyone, all my friends. And so I still continue to feel sometimes the calling that I needed to get myself right, to get myself back to good, you know, because once you're on drugs, your life is gone, your life is lost. And I came, I came to the conclusion that I knew that I wanted to stop that. And I knew that it better had happened. And 
just nothing felt good and I wanted to feel good. I wanted to feel that love that I felt at that yoga class that I had felt all those years with my friends and, and family. And one day I woke up and I decided to not do that anymore. I decided to clean myself and be free from, from drugs. And I decided to come back to Colorado Springs where I knew that I would feel love. And here I am today serving the community and healing through the community. Thank you for being here today. Thank you.